Um, thank you for coming in on uh, Wednesday night. And I know that it's uh, difficult on so many things going on at the same time. Uh, but we're going to have a fantastic uh, uh, conference here. Alex Jordan, Um Alex um, has traveled the world in many different places. Uh, he speaks uh, several languages. Uh, Trevor comes from New Zealand, the other side of the world, and that's fantastic that he comes in every year, a couple of times at least, to speak to a lot of different people in different cities and trying to wake up America, giving them the information, and that's fantastic. I mean, I consider him a patriot also. Um, I just want to uh, to the next slide. Uh, we're Bear Witness Central. We're a group of activists. Uh, we provide a lot of information. And we're mostly Americans of Hispanic descent, mostly Cubans. Um, and Americans are that uh, have concerns. And we have experienced socialism and communism in our countries. And therefore, we have that experience and we see what happened, what's happening in America uh, where some of those people might not realize it and they say, something's going on here, but I can't figure it out. Well, I think with the, the last uh, two speeches of Obama, I think almost everybody put two and two together and they already know. But anyway, uh, we have several websites. Uh, our main website in English is uh, bwcentral.org. We have uh, also a website in Spanish, New York you would say. Uh, we have Bear Witness Info, and that's where the Constitution, both in English and Spanish, uh, is there. Uh, we also have Florida Catholics against Common Core, and we're fighting Common Core both in school and in the state. And uh, so at this time, I think I want to thank all the people that have uh, helped us to promote this event. And, uh, and it was uh, a lot of work. I want to thank especially Cindy Graves for, for her show, uh, No Time Today, uh, Victoria Bear, uh, First Coast Tea Party. Uh, Stefan Gushoff also has helped us. Uh, and many, many others. Uh, if I don't mention your name, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, I think um, uh, we're going to have an invocation and um, a pledge of allegiance. And uh, how you do it? stand for the invocation, then we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. By the way, my name is Stephen Kuchel, I'm with Liberty Council, so it's a privilege for me to be here with all of you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, we come before you now, and we just thank you for this time to be together. I know that everyone has very busy schedules, and since I take time out on a, a Wednesday night, and fight the traffic, and it's, it's probably a situation where a lot of people are very tired right now, but thank you for everyone that has come out tonight, Father. <clears throat> Father, we gather tonight because we're very grieved by what is happening in this nation. We're grieved by what is happening in Washington. We know that this country is filled with many problems, with economic problems, financial problems, political problems, legal problems, judicial problems, but more than anything else, this country has a major spiritual problem because this country has turned its back on you, Father. And so tonight, we do not say, God bless America. We say, God have mercy on America this evening. We pray that corporately as a nation, we return to you and that corporately as a nation we repent for all that we have done in casting you out of our public courthouses and schoolhouses and public squares. We don't know what it will take for this nation to turn back to you. You may let, you may let it fail even more than it has so far, just as you let Israel fail in the Old Testament to bring Israel back to you. But we plead for your mercy, Father. We repent as a nation and we pray that this nation will come back to you very, very soon. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Lord and Savior that we pray. Amen. Let's all do the Pledge of Allegiance now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, not in all, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Since I'm up here, I'm also going to do a commercial. Um, as I said, I'm with Liberty Council. If you don't know who Liberty Council is, we're a nonprofit Christian law firm. We have offices uh, down in Orlando. I work out of the Orlando office, also in Leitrim, Virginia, Washington, D.C., and in Jerusalem, Israel as well. We're having a wonderful event next month in March, and I've given many of you the postcard already, but I want to tell you about it. We're having an event in Orlando called the Awakening 2015 Rebuilding the Wall. It's going to be on Saturday, March 14th, from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., a full-day event at Faith Assembly Church. That's a large church in downtown Orlando, very easy to get to. And the two featured speakers at the event are going to be Governor Mike Huckabee and Senator Rick Santorum. They're both going to be there live in person. They're going to be speaking. We're hoping to get them to do book signings as well. I don't need to tell you who they are. You all know who they are. Some of you may be getting ready to work for them because they're pretty much going to be presidential candidates. So if you want to see Governor Mike Huckabee and Senator Rick Santorum live in person and hear them speak, they'll be down in Orlando Saturday, March 14th at Faith Assembly Church. Tickets are going fast. They're only $20 each. It's a great price. You can pay more for either one of those, but you get to see both of them. My boss, our founder and chairman, Matt Staver, will be speaking as well. <clears throat> You'll have to forgive me, my voice is a little weak. I was in Boston last weekend, where I'm from. It was 10 degrees below zero, and there was three feet of snow on the ground, and I picked up something when I was up there. Pastor James Robinson, probably many of you watch him on TV, he'll be there as well. Plus, all a lot of other nationally renowned religious and political speakers. Another speaker who's not photographed on this card, but there's a gentleman by the name of Kamal Salim that many of you may have heard of. Kamal Salim was a child terrorist for Hezbollah. He used to go through those tunnels from Lebanon <clears throat> to Israel. And he came to America one day to try to recruit more terrorists for Hezbollah. Got in a car crash. Was nursed back to hell by a Christian doctor and his family. Became a Christian, now speaks all around this nation at churches and conferences to tell people about the danger of Islam. Even though our president says that we Christians are basically the same as these people, it's not the truth. So come for him as well. <clears throat> All the registration information is right on here. You can go on to theawakeningusa.org for tickets or call the 800 number there. If you have a group, an organization, a tea party or a church group or a political group, we have space for exhibitors as well. Rolando and Juan and Bear Witness and Oliver Tide and many folks are going to be there as exhibitors as well. Life of Legal Immigrants for America as well. So join us March 14th, 8.30 to 5 at the Faith Assembly Church in Orlando. Governor Mike Huckabee. Senator Rick Santorum live, we hope you all can make it. If you'd like more postcards, if you didn't get one from me, see me afterwards. And if you do have a group and want extras, I don't want to bring any of these back to the office. I got boxes of these in the office. So if you want to take a stack full home to give to your group afterwards, see me afterwards as well. Thank you very much. We hope we see you on March 14th. Thank you. There we go. We have some um, yes. questions. If anyone is running for public office, uh, let us know. Stand up, give us your name, what you're running for, and then sit down. No speeches. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I'm running for District 17 for the Florida House. Name? My name is Judy Thank you. Thank you. I mentioned two people, Mike Adagina and Al Ferraro, District 1 and District 2. Two good young men, along with Gene Youngblood. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Jeff Young, Jeff Young, at large. We have James Mueller running for District 3 City Council. Anybody else? You want to go on? Twice. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Jim Yellowfield running for Sheriff. Lawrence Jackson, a Republican running against Randy Fuller, who failed to successfully sign on the number of clauses in the special election. Derby, Derby, Derby. Mention the stump, please. Mention the stump. The stump. You mentioned it. I don't know. 
<laughs> I hope you know. I hope you're going to be here. February 28th, uh, my radio show is, uh, is sponsoring the stump here right in this very auditorium in this building. The seats will be gone. Uh, we've had an overwhelming, overwhelming turnout of the candidates for city election that have signed up to come here and meet you personally. It's a free event. There will be light food here available for you. Um, all of the mayoral candidates, with the exception of Mayor Brown, who considers it's a security problem, will be represented. All of the sheriff's candidates will be here, and an outrageous number of the city council candidates will be here. Like I said, it's a free event. My show will be done live from the stage, and Channel 4 will be filming the entire event and doing interviews throughout the evening. It's 5 to 10 p.m. on February the 28th. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Victoria? Victoria here? Do you have any, any, thing, any announcement? No? Okay. Glad right. you're here. Caught me off guard, Rolando. All right. So uh, we have uh, Alex Newman. Uh, he's going to talk about the Communist Cuba reset and implications for America. Alex, Alex is an international journalist, educator, author, and consultant. In addition, to serving as president of the small media and information consulting firm Liberty Sentinel Media Inc., he writes for a wide array of publications in the U.S. and abroad. He currently serves as a foreign correspondent for the New American Magazine, a contributor to WND, their Witness Central, newspapers and magazines, and has written two books including a major expose of the plot to dumb down America. That's including Common Core, um, American Children, Using Government as Schools. Uh, he speaks multiple languages fluently, and he has been all over the world uh, writing stuff. <laughs> Hi everybody, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I'm honored to be here and to discuss uh, this important topic with you all. Uh, so I'm going to get my slideshow ready so you guys can follow along. Uh, and we're going to talk about the, the reset with Cuba that was recently announced uh, last month or in December, excuse me, by Obama and Castro simultaneously. Um, and it might seem like a small thing, right? Cuba is a little communist island, who cares? But it's actually a big deal. Uh, and I'll tell you guys a little bit uh, about why it concerns me, and I think it ought to concern all of us. Uh, in one sense, it's kind of personal to me. I grew up in Latin America. I spent uh, probably half of my life down there in Mexico and Brazil. Uh, so I'm American, and I consider America my country. But at the same time, Latin America is always going to have a place in my heart, and the people there are good people, and they don't deserve what's happening to them. And Castro is a big part of it, and now Obama is uh, making buddy-buddy with Castro. So there you guys can see a picture of Obama and Castro. We'll talk about that in a little bit, shaking hands and all smiley. Um, so we're going to talk about Obama's Cuba reset, what it means for the United States, what it means for Cuba, uh, Castro's influence in Latin America, uh, Castro's supporters right here in America, believe it or not, there are plenty of them, and a lot of them have a lot of power and influence. And then the bigger picture, right? What is this all about? Why does this little tiny communist island matter in the grand scheme of things? Uh, so a little recap for those of you who don't follow the news uh, maybe as closely as I do. Uh, on December 17th last year, uh, there had been secret negotiations going on for some time. And then Obama and Castro both announced that they're going to have this framework to restore uh, diplomatic relations between the two countries. And I put countries in quotation marks because this irks me uh, quite a bit. If you guys ever read news reports about the United Nations, they always talk about countries. Uh, is Castro a country? No. He enslaved a country, but uh, he is not a country, right? So when they talk about us making friends with another country, that's not the issue here. We're talking about a communist dictator who has murdered thousands of people, who has stolen un unbelievable amounts of property, who has exported this wicked revolution, communist system, all around Latin America and abroad, even further than that in Africa. He played a big role bringing communism in Southern Africa and in Gola in South Africa. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But uh, Castro is not just your regular tin horn dictator, even though um, you know people see him as kind of a kook and a pariah. Uh, he's much more than that. Uh, so a little bit of detail about this plan that they have. Uh, first of all, they're going to open embassies, right? So Castro's going to have an embassy in Washington, D.C., and the United States is going to have an embassy in Havana. 
Um, we broke off relations in 1961, and we'll talk a little bit about why that happened in a moment. Uh, and then here's another good one. Uh, Obama has ordered the State Department to review Castro's status as a state sponsor of terrorism. Uh, anybody who thinks Castro is no longer a state sponsor of terrorism uh, just needs to look at the facts. Uh, he's harboring terrorist cop killers from the United States who have fled to Cuba. Uh, he continues to support terrorist movements across Latin America, and that's not going to stop. And he's made clear that he's not going to make any changes, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, other parts of the plan, we're going to take uh, steps to increase travel, trade, information flows, and the amount of money that can go to Cuba. Uh, and when I say Cuba, I really mean cash flow. So, you know, Obama framed it as something to benefit the Cuban people and the American people. It's not going to benefit the Cuban people, and certainly not the American people, and we'll talk about why in just a moment. Uh, he's also going to be pushing Congress to totally end the embargo. Uh, so the embargo that the United States has on Cuba, uh, that's within Congress's prerogative. In Article 1, Section 8, Congress has the power to regulate trade with foreign nations. Uh, so that's a constitutional exercise of their power to block trade with Cuba. Um, and Obama wants to undo that. So he's taken steps to undo.